and welcome to Credit Matters TV. I am Violaine Grimpral from the S&P Paris office. Today we're going to be talking about S&P recent decision to assign a positive outlook to Volkswagen's rating, rated A-. I'm delighted to be joined by Eric Tanguy, Director for Corporate Rating. Good morning, Violaine. Eric, welcome. Thanks. So, first of all, could you explain us what justifies this decision and, uh, in particular, what do you see uh, of what is the impact of the integration of Porsche? As you know, Volkswagen uh, used to own 49.9% of Porsche. They now have made the decision to purchase the remaining 50% that they uh, did not own in this company. And we see that as, as positive for the rating. And that's the main reason behind our decision to assign a positive outlook on their rating. Obviously, the positive outlook indicates the possibility that we would raise uh, Volkswagen's rating probably within the, the coming two years. Um, basically, a couple of benefits coming from the Porsche integration. It will be consolidated in the accounts of Volkswagen now, uh, starting actually in August of, of this year. Um, and as you may know, it's a well-reputed brand. It's making inroads in, in several key markets, emerging countries as well. I mean, they're solid in Europe. Um, they're well known in the US, but also they're gaining traction in several growing markets like in Asia, Asia Pacific. Um, also, they have superior margins. Um, they are performing even stronger than an Audi. So the integration of this level of earnings within the Volkswagen Group in their consolidated numbers will be positive. We basically are looking at a group which will be generating, including Porsche NAR, about 50% of the Volkswagen earnings will be coming from what we call the premium and luxury segments. So that will include Audi, Bentley, and also now Porsche. Uh, so it's, it's a positive contribution to their earnings and therefore their credit profile. Well, and the European car market is fairly depressed. How is Volkswagen coping with that environment? That's absolutely right. And it's, uh, it certainly is the situation as, as we see it at the moment. Uh, the European car market is down 7% at the moment. But to be honest, uh, Volkswagen is, is doing well despite that environment. Volkswagen is obviously the most global of the European car makers. And they're making good inroads in several growing markets. They are strong in China and still getting stronger. They're resisting rather well in Brazil and Latin America. They're growing in, in Russia. They're also growing in North America following the opening of the Chattanooga plant um, last year. So obviously they're, uh, they're compensating what they're losing in terms of volumes um, in, um, in Europe from other regions. So the volume impact, we, we can see looking at their numbers, they're still in, in highly in positive territory. They're growing their volumes by 10%, and that's the July 2012 numbers, so impressive growth still. And they're achieving that growth in volumes uh, without any, any major erosion in terms of earnings. We see them uh, cruising at the moment at 6.6, 6.8% margin. They were at 7% last year. So as you can see, there's, there's some, a slight dip, but it's very limited and, and nowhere as, uh, as dramatic as we may have seen on other European car makers. Uh, this is not at all the same. It's, we assigned this to their toolkit strategy. They're successful at this. And they're also able to, uh, to price at a premium. That, that applies, of course, to their luxury and premium segment, but it also applies to the main brand Volkswagen across Europe and, and across the US. Well, so what would it take for a rating upgrade? We, we're giving ourselves a, a bit of time. We know that the macro environment is, is not uh, necessarily supportive of further um, positive developments in the near future. So that's why we've highlighted the two-year time horizon. A number of conditions will be uh, required. We would want them to continue cruising above 6% operating margin. That's on an EBIT level. So that's part of, of the requirement we would like to see. And that would imply credit ratios that, that would be solid for an upgrade to the, single, to the single A rating. Typically, we would like to see them maintaining FFO to debt around 60%, debt to EBITDA around 1 to 1.5, not more than that. A couple of other elements that we will be looking at in the future to uh, decide whether we want to go for uh, an upgrade or not is also the way they turn around the Seat brand and also all their North American operations are doing in terms of earnings because this is still, um, it's still loss making at the moment, reducing, but still a, 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 a problem in their side. Uh, governance is also complex for, um, 
for Volkswagen, it's, we, we don't see it as a negative at the moment. We see it more as, as neutral, but to be honest, uh, we would qualify it as probably more complex than the average uh, European car maker. Also, we wouldn't want to see any credit impact from any material litigation, which is the case at the moment, and we would expect that to continue for us to move upward. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you. This concludes our edition of Credit Matters TV. Thank you and goodbye.